Don or Dan, I mean, are you are you ready to go? I need to share with you, don't I? I don't know how it works, but let's let's try it. All right. So we're we're going to be uh, we're going to be hearing from Dan tonight. Dan's going to be talking about um, postcards from the mid-century, visualizing the future, which is really kind of cool. So it should be fun to uh, listen to and see. All right. Um, well, last month you might remember. Uh, we saw Morgan Williams' uh, program on the photo exaggeration cards of uh, William Dad Martin, who played around with his cards, kind of manipulated them. And what, uh, between 1908 and 1911, I remember those dates because the cards you're seeing today often were around the same period. But um, these, of course, are more of uh, artist manipulated cards and more of a comical nature. So um, we're talking about a period in the early 1900s, which is, but we're going to start actually back before then a little bit in the late eight, 1800s, the Industrial Revolution. This is 1884, the uh, elongated balloon La France, uh, powered by an electric battery motor. Late 1800s, there are lots of new vehicles being created. Uh, this is Ferdinand von Zeppelin's first dirigible, about 1900. Uh, the Wright brothers plane, you know, first flew in 1903. Uh, Louis Blériot uh, crosses the English Channel in 1909. Um, this, I believe, is the first Mercedes-Benz automobile in uh, 1886. And I think one of those guys is Henry Ford on one of his first cars. And uh, Here's a, this is a Harley Davidson from 1910. So you have, a, and of course, the other aspect about the uh, late 1800s was science fiction was becoming very popular. It's Jules Verne, From the Earth to the Moon. Um, this is H.G. Wells, a, an original print from one of his uh, books, uh, <laughs> Worlds. And so, you have all these new devices and gadgets and futuristic images. Uh, so they started coming up with views of what the world would look like in a hundred years. This is a, a series of uh, postcards from, uh, you can see in the lower right hand corner, the uh, Chocolat Lombard, a, a French chocolate company. Uh, this is showing, uh, as you can see, balloons traveling, uh, arriving in London in, in the year 2012. This is eight hours to go to the moon and back to, from Paris. Here's a, uh, a flying car. And uh, here's the only thing we actually have, right? The uh, FaceTime on your cell phone. But then someone had the idea of let's take some of these crazy, uh, you know, vehicles and put them on a postcard and have some fun with it. And so we got a postcard like this from see, 1906 showing San Francisco in 50 years. And you can see on the street, all the crazy vehicles. There are accidents, people are falling down. Vehicles, the balloons and blimps in the sky. But what's that other crazy device in the sky? Well, that's not made up, that's real. That's the Schwebebahn, which is German for uh, monorail, that ran, is still running, but in the uh, towns of Elberfield, Barman and Borwinkel in Northern Germany. But eight miles long, as you can see, it connected Vowinkel on the left, went through Elberfeld and into Barman. And like I said, opened in 1901, still operating by the way. And so this is uh, one of the towns, this is Elberfeld. Uh, this is the Bayer factory, because this is where Bayer aspirin was created. It's a narrow valley. Um, they had to move people around and they thought the best way to do it was with a monorail. 
and it became a, a major attraction, still is. Uh, the Kaiser came and rode on the monorail when it first opened. Here's one of their uh, depots, terminals. So if you're in a town that already has a monorail with a little river in it, and you wanna show what it looks like in the future, well, you fill the river up with ships. And so these are all, these cards are all printed in uh, Germany or Austria. And all around between 1900 and 19, well, the beginning of World War I, 1914. And so they would just take an actual image of the town or city and superimpose all of these vehicles on it. I'm only showing you this one because you'll see this uh, version of the monorail a lot too, like here in Berlin. Oh, in, in the Zukunft, that's German for in the future. There's another card of Berlin, I think in the Tiergarten. Um, I won't even try to pronounce this name. So these are actual city scenes on which you've created this, uh, the artist has created the montage, the publisher has created the montage of all these, these different scenes. Here's uh, Meissen. And Paris also got, in the, got into it. Um, here's the uh, Champs-Élysées in the future. Uh, the Pantheon. The uh, Place de, de la Bastille. The Seine, once again, you have a river, fill it up with ships. That's what it should look like in the future. Um, this doesn't have the monorail. That's, that's not a monorail in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, a monorail by definition has to be uh, self-propelled and that's a, a cable car. But I like this card because I like the idea of the Seine having a lighthouse and a walrus. Also Switzerland, Volen. And you'll see, you'll see the same images used over and over. And they're different publishers. Uh, here's Luzerne. And there's also cards from uh, Hungary and Slovakia. Pozoni, which uh, I'm confused. It was in Hungary, I think now it's in Slovakia. I won't even try to pronounce this one. And here's some from Belgium. I, these are the first, these are all from uh, Anvers, which I guess was a, a popular enough city in Belgium to warrant having three different views. And here's a strange one. It is Russian. It says Moscow on the back. Um, the card's not in very good shape to begin with, but the image actually looks like this, even if it was in good shape. This is not just all damage to the card. And uh, if anyone speaks Russian, you're, you're welcome to uh, tell me what this says. No takers. There, there is a, a member of the San Francisco club who's Russian. So maybe he'll translate it for me someday. I say the future in mass Massachusetts because the abbreviation mass is used on most of these cards. Here's orange mass. And this card for some reason uh, is in very common, very common. You go on eBay, you'll see it all the time. People ask all kinds of crazy prices, but it is the singular most common card of this variety. And I don't even know where Orange, Massachusetts is. Um, here's Copley Square in Boston, slightly different style as you can see. No, another one of Boston in the future. This is uh, the big hall in Boston, Faneuil Hall, I think that's it. Another slightly different uh, images here with the, a little more colorful. And this is Revere Beach. And now a whole bunch of cards in mass, Baldenville mass, Greenfield mass, Miller's Falls mass. West Warren Mass. West Warren, 
uh, popular enough that it has two cards. Athol Mass. Now, a lot of these Massachusetts cards were issued by Reichner Brothers, which was a, uh, an American company, but they would say on the back of the card that they're, they have offices in Boston, Munich, and Leipzig, but they didn't really have offices in Munich and Leipzig. They were simply sending the image there to be printed and then returned. There's Leo Minster. You get quite the uh, lesson of uh, Boston small towns. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Massachusetts small towns. Mm -hmm. um, Shirley Mass, uh, the square in West Gardner. Oh, and this particular card, look in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, behind the uh, the vehicle, this is what you see: postcards. And uh, I always wonder if this particular postcard was actually sold in that store, which creates kind of a Twilight Zone uh, in infinity thing. We also now have the future shown across America. Here's a Clifton Forge, Virginia. Which I think is pretty, I mean, I don't know much about uh, Virginia, but I can't imagine there are any cities there in the early 1900s that, th that, that thought that they someday might look like this. There's Highland, New York. Greater Monroe, that's, that's New York. And I always like the way the artists played with the track, how they just kind of had it go off into the distance. Granville, New York. Woodhaven. This one, as you can see, has a uh, has a black character in the front. It's kind of unusual for postcards back then. Another view of Woodhaven. Ozone Park. These are all around Queens, I believe. Atlantic City. Uh, this is Chicago. And Galveston, which is a real oddball. Now, I was able to uh, actually find a few views of those towns to see what it actually looked like back then as compared to their future view. So for example, this is the Brookfield Inn in Brookfield, Massachusetts in the future. Well, here's the actual Brookfield Inn back then. Here's Spencer, Massachusetts. And I think this is the exact same view of this hotel and the building behind it. Uh, the same with this picture of, I think this is uh, Monroe, New York. And here's the actual building. This, so this might've been the, uh, the photo that was sent back to Germany to be turned into this. Or Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Well, this is what Pittsfield actually looked like in the early 1900s. And I managed to come across this chrome of Pittsfield. In fact, it looks like to be in the 50s. I think it looked better in the early 1900s. And the almost present. In uh, 1959, Marie Antoinette Le Plou uh, announces her candidacy for mayor of San Francisco. And you can see in the uh, second paragraph from the bottom where one of her uh, campaign promises is to have a ferry with a monorail terminal at the ferry building. But uh, Marie lost to the incumbent, George Christopher. But George Christopher actually was also a monorail proponent. He had been to uh, France and he had seen this. This is a test track of the Safège monorail, uh, which uh, is, has a starring role in Francois Truffaut's movie of Fahrenheit 451. Uh, not quite as uh, interesting as Julie Christie, but still a, a prominent role in the movie. Uh, so he sees this and he's taken to the test track and he sees it run and he comes back to San Francisco and says, uh, this is what we should have in the Bay Area. Because at that time, they were looking at 
this mass rapid transit throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. And here's a, a brochure that was, as you can see, put out by the Senate Interim Committee on San Francisco, Bay Area Metropolitan Rapid Transit Problems. But a monorail, that was these people were not gonna have a monorail because uh, this is a study put out by Parsons, Bickerhoff, Tudor, Bechtel, the good people at Bechtel, who uh, pretty much had already decided that what we wanted in San Francisco and the Bay Area was what we got, BART. So they put out this brochure showing the problems with a monorail. On the far left, see how little room a BART train takes as compared to either the monorail that fits over a track like the Disneyland Aldeg monorail or the suspended monorail like the Sauvage monorail. It just takes up more room. And then in the tube, it takes up more room. So we didn't get that. Um, also, Kim Peterson, who uh, is a monorail, uh, was a monorail aficionado, uh, who wrote a book on the monorail, said that um, the Chronicle editorialized against the monorail. And he believes one of the reasons was because uh, the owner was heavily invested in concrete companies. So that's the reason why we never got this. What a shame. And that's the end of my program, folks. Any questions? Fantastic job, Dan. Brilliant. Everybody, thank, thank I hope you. everybody. Yeah, the great, great, great job. The only, the only, um, the only thing that I noticed I was going to ask you about is it looks like all of the, uh, almost looks like stickers were put on the postcards, and uh, it was doctored up that way. Um, is there any any truth to that, or was it just? Uh, Don't know how they were made. Yeah, it's interesting. But just one. One publisher pretty much did them all. Is that is that correct, or are there several? There's several publishers, yes. So they, they all had access to the same the same uh, little pieces of art showing all those different vehicles. And once in a while, you'd see a different one, like some of those Boston cards. They were, they were slightly different. Yeah. But of course, that was very prevalent back then. American postcard. Uh, publishers would send their image to Germany to be printed because Germany had much better printing presses and inks. So you see a lot of American cards from the early 1900s printed in Germany, or in this case, also Austria. Fantastic cards. <clears throat> Dan, um, I was just surprised that there was so much repetitive uh, pictures. Um, and I wonder if there's other series of future postcards that are going to be more bizarre. <laughs> I don't know. There, there are cards um, that are mostly printed in the United States um, that don't have the monorail. Usually they will just show a city scene and they like a subway, maybe like a subway entrance. They're a lot plainer. They're not as, as interesting at all. I started collecting monorail postcards a long time ago, so I know this will be concentrated on the one we have the monorail. It, it's fascinating that they appropriated uh, um, the monorail or the the system in uh, uh, Elber, Elberfeld, uh, Germany. Um, all the cards did that. It, it was obviously such a modern, out of this world system, even when that was built. Do you recall when that was, when Germany, when they built that? Was it that in the 1890s? That opened in 1901. 1901. And then, like uh, the previous person said, uh, there's, they were having fun with this, but they would, what, what they did is they took every conceivable. Uh, mode of transportation, what, be it the old cars um, or the Zeppelins or whatever, and they just crowded the picture with them. I just think it's just so funny. Um, nobody was thinking be, um, beyond that. They were just utilizing uh, and imagining there'd be all these forms uh, not changed necessarily. I, I, the French cards that you showed were fascinating, particularly the one about um, 
the uh, uh, being able to translate or, 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 or um, transmit the image of somebody talking via a telephone. That was fascinating. You have that card, right? Mm -hmm. I, That's I, a great card. Yeah. yeah the uh, in the future, and I assume they thought it was a positive thing. Cities would all have incredible amount of congestion on the streets. Yeah. In the, and in the sky. Yeah, the uh, the Wuppertal uh, monorail uh, still still is still running, still operating, um, and it's it is uh, they 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 figured out very quickly that it was a great attraction and started issuing postcards because there are just thousands of different views of the uh, the monorail. It's amazing it wasn't copied um, elsewhere in other cities in Europe. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, if, if they only really want. Monorails have always had a, had a difficult time. Um, of course, there's lots of monorails in in Japan. They uh, they they uh, in, like the uh, the technology, but for the rest of the world, um, I always say it's because there's there's no no hands to grease for monorails. It, it's totally new technology everywhere it is. And people think of it as just something that you, you ride at an amusement park. Fascinating. It uh, amazes me that um, the uh, monorail that's still in existence in uh, in Germany survived the war. That that had to be amazing just in itself, I would think. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it did not suffer any damage in World War II. Just mm -hmm. it's lucky. And that was a little industrial area. Oh, and I should mention, I always like to mention too, uh, Barman, which is one of the towns along the monorail, is where Frederick Engels was born. Oh. Like, oh. You know. So Bayer Aspirin and Das Kapital both come out of uh, those little towns. <laughs> Hello? Wow. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Don. I... Yeah, I wrote that thing in uh, It's interesting that that line follows the Booper River, which just goes around, runs right along the river. That made it easy to build because it did have to go through buildings. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the... I would say those cards, the various ideas about aerial balloons and blimps, uh, is really fascinating. And, uh, would be fun to look more exactly at all those ideas about balloons and zeppelins. I think that a wonderful show that was. And I think that valley was so narrow that maybe the bombers couldn't get in there or find the, the, the narrow valley. That's Perhaps. a good point. That's Perhaps. a good point. Yeah. It's well, worth it's worth writing that though. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I wrote it too. It's, it's yeah. Doesn't Seattle have a motor rail? Isn't that a motor rail? Yes. Yeah, from the 1963 World's Fair. Yeah. And and the city, the voters in Seattle many years ago voted to build a monorail as part of their uh, public transit system. And the city council just basically shelved it. Why? Um, Too expensive? Well, usually, like I said, it's because they, they already have relationships with all the companies that build the parts for trains, oh, yeah. and tracks and trains and, and all of that. Same thing with BART, you know, they already have relationships with the companies that build these things. And to build- You showed, a, a, you, you showed a picture of that monorail in France. Isn't that quite a line now? No, well, that, that was, uh, that was, there, there is that, type of monorail running in uh, Japan. But not in France? No, that was just a test track. Okay. And they eventually tore it down. If if memory serves me right, it, it, even when Disneyland first put in their monorail, uh, that stirred a, a lot of thinking to, uh, you know, a lot of cities around the country thinking that might be the way to go. But that never got off the ground either that I know of. No, it, it didn't. Oh. 
Huh. Orioles are too quiet. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Maybe. <clears throat> Dan, ready. Clarissa has said that she, if you send her the Russian card, she has a friend that can possibly translate it. Okay. Who knows what, what it might be saying. <laughs> yeah. Just send me the copy of the card, not the card. Yeah, true. <laughs> a picture. Just scan it and send it, sure. That's great. Great job, Dan. Well, great job. I yeah. really appreciate that. Seattle, Seattle does have a monorail. Yeah, it runs, runs from the what used to yeah. be the grounds a couple of months. fair um, yeah just the frederick and nelson build the building that's yeah. over there well it's just fascinating how many i'm just curious to know how many uh cards where you know i've looked through a lot of cards uh at a lot of different places and i don't think i ever ran across one of those so the huge collection that you have um how many cards do you have along those lines do you know not i not off i would guess around 40 or 50. <laughs> fantastic fantastic <laughs> anybody with any further questions yeah it's uh, bill burton here i collected uh, future cards in the united states none of them have monorails they all have elevated railroads blimps and uh what appear to be uh, bicycles, flying bicycles, but in small towns all over the place, Hanover, New Hampshire, White River Junction, Vermont. Um, I've got one New York City one, but everything else is these really small towns. Um, and I, I, I've looked at them, they don't all have, they, there's, I don't think there's two of them that have the same publisher, but the concept is all there. Um, would, you, you had a number of, of, of Massachusetts cards. I've never seen any of those. Um, how do you, how did you pick them up if you didn't search the word future? Uh, well, you can't actually, I, I don't want to give away any of my, uh, oh, too bad. Secrets. <laughs> no, you can, you can go on eBay and, uh, use the search term future or, um, or there, there are, there are other, you know, postcard sites, uh, foreign post postcard sites where you can use Zukunft the German word or avenir, which is the French word and see what pops up. Um, I, I don't know why, but those future cards from Hungary always get the highest prices. Huh. Like I said, there, there's a lot from uh, a lot from Germany and there's the French ones, but the ones from uh, Hungary or Slovakia, uh, those are the ones that the European collectors uh, go crazy over. I know it's a you know I've gone up to postcard dealers and say you have any postcards of cities in the future, and you know they look at me like I'm nuts. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Not unreasonable. Uh, that's that's great. That's great. Any other questions from anybody? Oh, I just wanted to add, great job, uh, Dan. And I could notice that they're really curious cards that they, like David was saying, they pack everything in there, all the vehicles for that time. They're showing a lot of age of modernity, you know, and for, you know, they're, they're feeling it's a very modern time. And then all those small towns probably thought it was in their best interest to make one of those cards to show hope for the future. <laughs> and at the same time, if you notice, there's hardly any animals in the cards uh, or anything live, but there's all machinery. But and the people in the cards, a lot of times, there's always one person getting hurt in the scene, or yeah. almost yeah. the, the modernity's taking over that person and getting you know trampled, ran over by a car. Or, you know, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's the same person I think on several of the cards who seem to be falling forward. Yeah, but so people people were afraid at one point of. Uh, um, trains or going through the city. In Baltimore, we don't have a train going through the city because they were afraid that they will crush all the kids. And so we have one at the one end and one at the other, <laughs> no crossing. So I guess that's a, um, the question I have, do you have, do you collect others image in the future that don't have that monorail or you're concentrating only on those? I, well, I, I've come across a few, but pretty much it's uh, it's the monorail. It has to have the monorail in it. 
Okay. You know, otherwise, uh, you can go crazy, can't you? Like, yeah. there are a lot of other cards out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Clarissa, didn't it, that train went right through the middle of Oakland for many years. Did it right down the main streets in Oakland? And they didn't, and that the passenger trains went right through the city. Oh, in Oakland, yeah. Oh, in, Oakland. in Baltimore, they didn't like that. Yeah, well, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we liked it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to show you. Uh, here's the book, Monorails, by Kim Peterson. This is like the one of the definitive books on, on monorails. And um, he, he uh, unfortunately passed away several years ago. But he put together the... I, met him because he had the monorail society which i think you can still find online talking about promoting monorails mm -hmm. the history of monorails and, and promoting monorails they flew to japan yeah and and he's tr he, when he was alive he would travel around he went to japan to uh, ride all the monorails they flew wasn't there a fear that people would fall off the platforms I mean, I, how do you how do you get on those those street cars well you'd, you'd have well like the ones in Germany, you'd have to climb upstairs. Yeah, but why couldn't you fall off the platform when it was coming into the station? Well, that's always a problem. <laughs> the problem with the subway in New York. <laughs> stay away, stay away from the edge. Yeah, sure. I, I think that one card you have, Dan, that shows the the inside view where they load them up. Yeah, the, uh, it looks like one of the roller, not the roller coaster, but the sky cages at the amusement parks, that housing where you stand in and there. It looks like that almost. I, yeah, I. Of their monorail in, uh, along the Booper Valley. I also thought it was kind of interesting going through your cards. Uh, you, you mentioned it too. All the rivers were stacked up with uh, ships of various types. Um, and being, you know, I kind of lean towards uh, nautical postcards more than anything. And I thought that was fascinating because there would be a heck of a traffic jam out there on those rivers if those ships were out there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so anyway, just a fantastic job, Dan. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I always like talking about my my uh, postcards. Yeah, no, fantastic. We we appreciate it very much.